Hello everybody, how are you doing? I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad to welcome you to another episode of Dreamland Canada, a video series that will help you settle in your dream country. This video is about finding jobs in Canada. It's a much demanded video. So many people ask about tips how to find jobs in Canada. You're in your home country and you're immigrating to Canada very soon. You're wondering how to find jobs in a new country. So in this video, I'll give you tips through which it will be very easy for you to find jobs in Canada in whichever sector you are. So without further ado, let's begin this video after the short intro. Okay, so the first tip is for all of those people who are working for multinational companies, if you're working for any of the organization who has got offices or clients in Canada, you've got a great opportunity because your organization can send you through an internal transfer to any of their offices or the client's offices in Canada. So let's say you're an IT professional working for any of the MNCs like Accenture, Infosys, TCS, HCL, Wipro, Amdocs, Cognizant, and there's so many other organizations who have got offices and clients in Canada. If you are working for any of those organizations, you have a great opportunity of getting an intra-company transfer directly to your office or the client in Canada. Not only these service-based companies, other product based companies like IBM, HP, Cisco, Microsoft, Google and many others they've all got offices in Canada as well. Not only IT professionals if you're working for any multinational company who has got offices or clients in Canada you do actually have a great opportunity of getting an intra-company transfer directly to your organization. Also these multinational companies do prefer their own employees who have the PR, they do prefer sending them to Canada because first of all, they save money, they save time and they save the risk as well. So which money I'm talking about? They of course save the fees of applying the work permit, they save the time. So if they have an immediate requirement, they can send you right away you have the PR, they can send you in a couple of days. But if they apply for someone's work permit, it's gonna take one or two months. So they definitely save a lot of time. And of course they save a lot of risk because there's a risk involved in uh, applying the work permit he or she might not get the work permit. So there's a sense of surety as well that yes, you have got the visa. It's just the internal formalities of the organization that they need to complete. And then they can make you fly within a week. Okay, so all of those people who are working for organizations which haven't got offices in Canada or clients in Canada. So what all of those people should do. So I've got many tips for you. Please watch this video till the end. The first tip for you guys is getting a Canadian virtual number. What a virtual number actually is and which are the companies that actually provide these kind of virtual numbers? What are the rates? Let's talk about it. So you can go on to Google to find different companies which to provide the services of a virtual number. So basically what a virtual number is, uh, you will have a number which will actually be a Canadian number. You can give the contact number in your resume so the interviewer won't feel that he's talking to someone who is sitting in India. Yes, in most of the organizations, there would be different rounds of interviews. So if you clear your first round of interview, you can tell them that you are there in India or, you know, UAE, wherever you are. You can tell them that you'll be there in one week or 10 days time. And then you can come over to Canada and uh, attend the second round of interview. But yes, this uh, virtual number gives the employers and the interviewers kind of a feeling that they're talking to someone who is there in Canada. The charges are very less. It's just, you know, two, three, four dollars. You can go on and uh, get a virtual number. The only drawback is that if you're in India, you'd get calls in night time because that time is the working hours of Canada. But to get some, you gotta lose some. So at least you can compromise your sleep if you want to get a job in Canada. Okay, so next tip is very important because it's about your resume. You should write your resume in the Canadian format. Now, what's this Canadian format or the Canadian style of writing the resume? I'll make a complete video on it, but uh, until then, you can know that uh, there are many websites, dozens of websites available online, which does provide the uh, templates for writing Canadian resumes. They might charge you a bit for it, but they're very helpful. I know I've seen resumes in my offices, uh, people writing you know, four pages resumes, five page resume, it does not work here. You have to write 
key words in the resumes. That's the very important tip. Nobody's going to read four or five page resume. People write the complete journey of their professional life in a resume, but that's not what employers are actually looking for. Employers are looking for keywords. They don't have time to go through four or five, six pages of resumes. I will make a video very soon on how to write Canadian style resume, but until then go to Google. There are many blogs available, many websites which just provide free formats. So use them for your own benefit. Okay, so all of those people who are actually awaiting their permanent residence or all of those people who have already got the ITA, they're about to submit, you should start preparing for the struggle in Canada right away. Um, you have to come here, give the jobs interview. So for the jobs interview, it's very important to have a good communication skills. If you know French, that adds a lot of stars in your uh, profile in your resume but even if you don't know French here if you're fluent in English if you're able to communicate uh, really well in that case you are a good candidate uh, for uh, for a job interview if you're not able to understand what the interviewer is actually asking you or if you're not able to communicate uh, properly if you're not able to give the answers properly in a manner that the interviewer actually understands you pretty well and uh, you are not able to convince him that you have a great communication skills getting a job would be a very difficult task now how you can actually improve your english speaking and english listening habits and skills there's a very popular app named as cambly let me help you uh, go through it how you can actually utilize that app so how you can actually go on to utilize this app for your benefit just go to this app click on tutors here you'll find a list of tutors uh, who are available online at the moment. So you can go on to click any of the tutor you like. So if you like this tutor, you can actually go on to select and just click on uh, practice English. Uh, if you don't like this tutor, you can actually go on to find any other tutor. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. How about you? I'm good as well. Uh, and the problem with my English speaking is that I speak very fast. So that is the point where I miss, you know, some of the words and I realize it, but it's my habit. So I'm very, it's very difficult for me to improve. That is only because of your natural language, which is faster than most people speak English. But knowing that you're speaking fast, you have to just kind of Take a breath after you say a sentence or... So you saw how helpful can Cambly be for you. Uh, you'll be able to communicate with a native English speaker, with a trained English teacher as well. And especially for a Dream Abroad family, there's a flat 30% discount if you register to the link given in the description box below. Okay, so the next very important tip is uh, making connections in Canada. If you have connections in Canada in your professional field, that will definitely help you in getting a job. At least it can arrange interviews for you and then it's your job to crack that interview, right? So how to make connections? You don't know many people over here. How to make connections? Go to LinkedIn. That's the best place for making connections, for making professional connections. Go to LinkedIn and search for all of those people who are there in Canada, in your field, in different organizations. Don't just go and straight away ask for a job or a job opportunity in their organization, but make connections with them. Ask them what is the, uh, what is the culture of uh, your job in Canada? How do people actually work there? What is, what is the employee's expectations? Or what skills are actually mandatory? What skills are actually in demand in your, in your field? Make connections and when you have connections, if they have opportunity in their organizations, they will definitely recall your name and they will definitely contact you. So making connections is so important and LinkedIn is definitely a very important tool. So please make the best use of LinkedIn and you can also find jobs in LinkedIn. So maybe you can take a premium membership of LinkedIn and you can find jobs through your connections as well and through the LinkedIn job portal as well. Of course, when I talk of job search, you would ask which all job search websites are there. So there's Indeed, there's Monster, there's Randstad, there's Workopolis. So many are there. You can go on there and uh, definitely search for jobs. I made a complete video on it. And of course, there's a Canadian Job Bank as well. Uh, so I made a complete video on it and you can watch that video. I'll provide the link to that video in the description box. You can check out the video. There are 10 different options which I gave you in that video. So while you're in your home country, while you've got the ITA, 
you know that you're going to immigrate to Canada very soon, you should start the preparations of finding the job right then and there. Uh, what are the preparations I'm talking about? So you should go to the websites, different job search websites uh, and check out uh, what are the employer's expectations, which certifications are uh, very important in Canada, uh, which skills are very important in Canada, which are the in-demand uh, skills, which are the in-demand jobs if you're working in IT. Let's say if you're uh, working as a, as a tester, as a QA analyst, automation can give wonders to your profile. So if you can learn automation, uh, for let's say four or five months it will add wonders to your resume so this is something which is very important and a point which you should definitely consider okay one very important tip that i want to give you through this video is uh, don't hesitate to work for lower designations when you come over here in canada you might be a manager working in an it company or in uh, logistics in india but you might not get the same designation as soon as you land here in Canada. If you're getting a lower designation job, accept it. Have some Canadian experience, let's say six months, uh, one year, one and a half year. Have some Canadian experience. Yes, this will be a time of struggle, but this would definitely help you find the job of your dreams. This would he definitely help you um, making a great step further ahead in your, in your professional career. What people actually do is uh, people get very discouraged if they don't get the kind of job which they were actually expecting or which they were actually working uh, for in a home country. So if uh, let's say you, you are a team leader there and uh, you don't get the team lead job here in Canada, people get very disappointed and uh, sometimes they even immigrate back to their home country. So that is not a point. You have come here, you have come to a land of opportunities. So please make complete, complete use of it. Okay, when I talk about jobs in Canada, it's very important to tell you about uh, the importance of Canadian experience. If you have Canadian experience, employers give a lot of weightage to your resume. People also say that some employers do exploit the fact that uh, people coming from the home country won't have the Canadian experience. So they offer you less amount of salary. So uh, let's say for an average uh, guy in IT, the salary is let's say $75,000 uh, per annum. But uh, if you don't have the Canadian experience, they might offer you something like 55, 65 uh, or maybe $70,000, which is definitely not your worth, but accept it. This was what I was told uh, when I came over to Canada that if you even get $55,000, $60,000, do accept it. That's a different fact that I came over through uh, the internal company transfer. So I didn't miss that opportunity. But if you don't have that opportunity in your hand, if you're getting a job for 60,000, 65,000, accept it and then you gain some Canadian experience. At least you're working in your own field, right? That's a big, big bonus. You can uh, accept that uh, offer, work for that organization for six months, one year, ask them for an increase. If they don't increase it, you have a great chance of actually, um, you know, switching from that organization to any other organization. The good part here in Canada is that the uh, notice period is just 15 days. Can you believe it? 15 days, you can give a notice uh, to your current employer and then you can move on to the next employer. And of course, you can get the... Uh, you can get your desired salary as well. I'll make a complete video on the importance of Canadian experience, how you can actually gain Canadian experience if you don't have it. Uh, I'll make a complete video on it. I cannot talk about each and everything in one video, so I'll definitely talk about the Canadian experience in a different video. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you really like the video, if you think that this uh, video added some value, some information in your life, so please click the thumbs up button and uh, if you didn't like the video, please click the thumbs down button and also please share your feedback in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go and click the subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss any of the videos. Thanks again for watching this video.